There's a whole category of super expensive software applications out there that lets you search the Bible and link related notes and resources together. Two of the most popular are Logos and Accordance. These powerful apps usually cost hundreds if not thousands of dollars and they let you not only read the Bible text, but also dig into the original Greek and Hebrew definitions using built-in tools like lexicons and dictionaries. Now I've paid for and used lots of Bible software in the past, including both Logos and Accordance. And honestly, they're great apps, but they're overkill for the average person who just wants something for casual Bible study. For most people, you can do just about everything that you'd ever want from an expensive Bible software program like this, and you can do it for free using plain text files in Obsidian. So in this video, I'm gonna save you a bunch of money and I'm gonna show you how to set up the Bible in Obsidian for yourself. I've even prepared a bunch of resources that you can use to do it for yourself, so stay tuned to the end of the video where I share all the links to those resources. Okay, let's dive in. The first step in setting up the Bible in Obsidian is figuring out how you want to structure it fundamentally. You can either add the Bible to your vault or you can just link to the verses using web services like Uversion. Now, personally, I prefer to keep the files in my Obsidian vault so that I can link notes together and see those connections in my local graph. But if visualizing those connections isn't important to you and you just want a quick way to embed Bible verses in your notes, then there are a couple of plugins that make that incredibly easy. This is by far the easiest way to get started, but in my opinion, it's worth a little bit of extra effort to set up the entire Bible inside of your Obsidian vault if you're going to do regular Bible study in Obsidian. But if you do decide to go the easy route, I recommend you use the Uversion linker because you can choose from any of the translations available on the Uversion site. Just know that you can't easily connect the contents of those embedded verses to other notes in your Obsidian vault. Now, if you decide that you do want to keep the entire Bible in Obsidian, which is what I personally recommend, then the next decision you have to make is the format that you want to use when you add those text files to your vault. And there are two approaches here, each with their own pros and cons. Note as chapter and note as verse. Adding the text in the note as chapter format results in considerably fewer files being added to your Obsidian vault. So if you're worried about these files cluttering up your graph view, then that might be a better option for you. With the Notice Chapter option, you can still use a plugin like Bible Linker to link to or embed specific verses in your notes, but you won't see those connections at the verse level in the local graph. The other approach is to add the Bible text to your vault in the Note as Verse format. And this will add around 30,000 files to your Obsidian vault, but will allow you to make connections from individual verses to other notes in your vault and have them be viewable in the local graph. I prefer to break my notes down into the smallest component pieces as I talk about in this video where I explain the value of atomic notes. So if you have to pick one approach, I'd recommend this one. Now, some people won't want to add that many files to their vault, which I understand, but since they're all plain text files and they don't take up much room, I personally don't care. It doesn't significantly diminish the performance of the app in my opinion. Now, the one place you will notice a slowdown is likely that big graph view, but I don't think it's all that helpful when I'm working with my notes anyway, so I almost never use it and I rely on the local graph instead. Now, the one place I do notice a performance hit is on mobile, so when I sync my vault using Obsidian Sync, I make sure to exclude the folder that contains all of these individual Bible verse files. I pretty much only use Obsidian on my phone for capture while journaling anyways, so this isn't a big deal to me. The benefit of having all these notes as verses is that I can create my own cross-reference library from all the notes that I've taken over the years. I've been taking sketch notes for quite a while now because it helps me to retain more from the messages without having to go back and review everything that was said. And I take these notes in GoodNotes on my iPad mini. Then I export those images and I drop them into notes in my Obsidian Vault and I transclude the individual verses that were mentioned in the message. This allows me to start at one of my sketch notes, click on a Bible verse mentioned there via the local graph, which then opens up that verse note and shows me all the other sketch notes that I've taken over the years that also mention that specific verse. And this was the thing that really got me into using Obsidian in the first place. I had seen this kind of interlinking done in those expensive Bible software programs before, and I wanted a way to do that in my own notes inside of Obsidian. I also think there's value in having all of my notes across all the different domains of my life in one place as I can connect individual verses, not just to my sermon sketch notes, 
but also to other notes like this map of content on habits. The hardest part of doing it this way is that you have to have a way to create all those individual text files. But my friend helped me run a script on the King James Version of the Bible, which is public domain, and I've zipped everything up into a download that you can get for free at download.mikeschmitz.com Bible. So if I had to pick just one, I'd pick the note as verse format. It's best suited for leveraging the power of linked notes in Obsidian. But the truth is, you don't have to pick just one, and I've actually combined both of these in my own Obsidian Vault. I have all of the books of the Bible organized by folder inside one root Bible folder in my Obsidian Vault. Then each chapter has a folder inside of the book folder. Inside of the chapter folders are individual files for each verse that follow the bookchapter.verse.md naming convention. And then there's a chapter note that has verses added under third level headers and have inline links to the original Hebrew and Greek lexicon definition files that I copied over from a great resource called Kingdom Study Tools. I've got a link to that original resource in the description below this video as well. Now having the notice chapter format inside of my Obsidian Vault allows me to read the Bible in Obsidian and hover over the Strong's numbers in line to see the definitions from the original languages just like you would in one of those really expensive Bible programs as long as you have those files added to your vault as well. It's pretty incredible. I find this easier to read though if the links are smaller and moved up a bit, kinda like a superscript text formatting. But since you can't do that in plain text apps like Obsidian, I've got a CSS file with some visual tweaks that I've added under the Appearance section in the Obsidian settings. This applies some visual styling to every file that has a certain CSS class applied to it. In this case, it's Lexicon. There are also links at the top to jump to the next and previous chapters if you wanted to read the Bible that way. But I've actually taken this a little bit further by creating a note with a bunch of tasks for all of my daily Bible readings. I manually created this note from a chronological Bible reading plan that I found online, but the end result is that if you use the Obsidian Tasks plugin and you craft a query for your daily note template, you can pull in the daily readings into the Bible reading plan inside of your daily note. Now I have these placed inside of a custom callout in my daily note, and I walk through how to set up this reading plan in this other video if you want to know all the details. I've included this reading plan as a downloadable resource as well if you want to use this yourself. And obviously you can use the same approach for other daily readings if you so desire, but the workflow is basically to open up your daily note, go through the readings, and then check off the tasks when you're done. I have the tasks set to repeat every year, so checking them off automatically creates the next instance of the task in my chronological Bible reading plan note. There are a couple of other things that you can do to make your Bible study in Obsidian even more powerful though, especially if you use the note as verse format. So for example, I used to have colored highlighters that I would use to highlight verses in my paper Bible, and I transferred all of those over as tags inside of Obsidian. You can add note level tags to each verse and then tag the notes according to topics or themes. I have nested tags here, but you can see that under the main Bible tag I have, for example, 115 verses tagged with promises, and so on. I manually added all these tags from my paper Bible when I was stuck in my room with COVID a few years ago, but the end result is that I can now click on one of the tags in my right sidebar and open up a search for all notes that match that tag in the left sidebar. So for example, if I click on the prayer tag, I get a search that opens up and shows all the verses that have the prayer tag. And then I can hover over the verse, hold the command key, and see that verse in a pop-up window. This makes it easier to find related verses provided that you've put in the work to tag them all first. But tagging isn't the only way that you can group verses together. There are many resources available in Christian bookstores called topical Bibles that give you a bunch of verses based on a specific topic that you happen to be studying. So I also took a few of my analog topical Bibles and I added everything in them into Obsidian, transcluding individual verses in each note by topic. I have a root folder in my Obsidian vault called topical Bible. Then if I open that, I have a couple of subfolders, for example, your attitude, and in that folder are a bunch of notes on individual topics like faith, goal setting, integrity, and leadership. Each note has a bunch of transcluded verses that I manually added based on their mentions in my analog topical Bibles. And this allows me to drill down into the folder that I want and get inspired by browsing the verses grouped by a particular topic. 
And of course, because I use the node as verse format and I have these verses transcluded, I can also navigate to the topical Bible notes by following the chain of notes in my local graph as well. Now there's a larger point I want to hit on here before we wrap up this video, and that is there isn't one right way to connect things inside of your Obsidian Vault. So far in this video, I've demoed how to connect things by backlinks, by folder hierarchy, and by tags. In my opinion, this is much more powerful than just using a single method of connection between your notes and ideas. But the trick is to figure out which method to use where, which is highly personal. So you need to use the method that makes the most sense to you, and that may take some trial and error. You may decide that your way of connecting things looks completely different from mine. But if you want a place to start, I have put together some free resources for you to play around with. So there you have it. That's how I set up the Bible in Obsidian. Now, if you want to set up the Bible in Obsidian for yourself, I have a couple of free resources for you. First, I have a zip file which just has the plain King James Version note as verse format notes that you can unzip and add to your own Obsidian Vault. These verses aren't tagged, and it does include the notice chapter version as well, but they aren't linked to the Greek and Hebrew lexicons. Just unzip the file, copy that folder, and paste it into your Obsidian Vault. Second, I have a zip file that includes the King James Version of the Bible in the note as verse format, plus the tag note as chapter version alongside the Greek and Hebrew lexicon files. This is a lot of files, but it does give you everything that you need to connect individual verses and also read the Bible in Obsidian with the original language references in line. And lastly, I have my own Bible study files. This includes the King James Version of the Bible in the note as verse format, but also has all of my own personal tags added. It also includes the note as chapter format linked to the Greek and Hebrew lexicon files, as well as my topical Bible notes. All of these are available to download in the same zip file from the same URL, which is download.mikeschmitz.com slash Bible. And if you join my online community, I actually have an Obsidian published version of all of this for members that you can access alongside all my mind map book notes in PDF, OPML, Markdown, and MindNode formats. The community also has virtual co-working sessions and accountability to help you achieve your goals and bi-weekly Q&A sessions where we talk about PKM, Obsidian, and how we can use our tools to be more productive and creative. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, you'll probably love my newsletter, Practical PKM. The newsletter goes out every Monday and includes an original essay from me about applying values-based PKM principles to be more productive and creative, a link to something cool that's usually Obsidian related, and my mind map book notes from a book that I've read recently. You can sign up for the newsletter for free by going to practicalpkm.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in another video.